another new thing that I just heard about, actually, as a matter of fact, this morning. Uh, something called relationship-based work. What is that? Yeah. I assume you have something to do with this. So, It does. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a framework that we um, just recently introduced, but I kind of hope that it's not just ours, that it it's something that everyone can benefit from. And it's a complement to this idea of activity-based working. So if I, if I just give that a moment, ABW or activity-based work has its roots all the way back in the 80s. And it's a design practice, which is pretty common today, which is just asking the question, what activities need to be supported in this environment? And then making sure that the range of spaces in the environment can support it. It's something we do whenever we shop for a home, right? So like mm -hmm. we might want a dining room, but if we're really smart, we'll say, what are we gonna do there? We're going to eat. We're going to play cards. We might have people over for drinks. We might do a little bit of homework. Maybe we'll take So you look at the activities and say, does the design of the support the activities? Here's the challenge. The activities these days can be supported a lot of different places. And so just looking at activities as a basis for workplace design isn't really enough. Mm -hmm. And through our research, and there's been a lot of recent initiatives, our work with Future Forum, our work with Dr. Nigel Oslin, Dr. Andreas Hofbauer, but also combined with work we did well before the pandemic, it's all pointing back to relational things. The CEO wants better culture. What does that really mean? You know, yeah. the employees are looking for their closest colleagues to spend time in ways that you can't on video, but they're also hoping to reconnect with a few other teams that they haven't seen for a while, what are known as strong ties and weak ties. Um, we've uncovered data around the desire to be, to have better quality time with, with managers and leaders even among other leaders in physical offices. Um, we've been exploring a concept called place attachment, which is essentially the relationship we form with places. Like if you sit at the same seat at the dinner table each night and would, wouldn't be happy if somebody sat in your chair, your chair is a function of what's considered place attachment. And so mm. there's been a major detachment from offices for many years. And so relationship-based work is basically a means of saying to a, a leader, but also to employees, these environments can have really positive effects on all of these relationships within a company or within an organization. And that needs to be a priority for planning too. And there's data, there's good data around how people are seeking offices and administrative areas in healthcare and higher education spaces to be a place that helps them form better relationships and function as part of a broader community. Mm -hmm. And I just don't know that the design practices to date have ever fully acknowledged those or put enough science behind how this works. 